to the Conservation Commission meeting, our regular meeting of Thursday, May 9th. Um, I'll just uh, do roll call. John, if you want to go. John Fusek here. Here. Rob Bates Mason here. Susan here. And then and Ann Silvio here. Okay. So we're just missing Linda. Okay. Uh, approval of the special meeting minutes of April 4th. Um, any comments on the, there was a, you saw the email with a couple of the updates for the minutes? No, but if it came in the last few days, I haven't seen any. Oh, okay. So, uh, the, the changes I'd make to the minutes is that in the, um, it says the April, uh, special April 4th meeting was, a, uh, minutes were approved. No. Oh, no, these were from not the ones we just got. Um, these are the ones I sent her. Or that can't possibly be. Yeah. She sent me the wrong ones. I'll go back and look, Robin. I'll make your changes and I'll send them. Okay, so we'll just postpone that to the, the next meeting yeah, um, yes, to approve. Table it and make the table it. Okay, um, public comment. Yeah. Great news from the public comment department. Um, Bristow just identified its 121st and 122nd uh, species of birds yesterday. Right. If you're interested, an eastern kingbird and a Wilson's warbler were spotted. All right. All right. Did you get my text yesterday? Your text? I did get that. Yeah, it was oh, down her voice. Leaving the transfer station by that electrical area, mm -hmm. there was a um, sand, one of those things on Sandpipers, the ones that walk yeah, like, like this. that. Slightly by off. itself. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Yeah. yeah many of those Comes in with, with heavy yeah. rains, they kind of wander around. Wander. It's not that we're not that far from the shore. Okay, but I mean, it was. Don't normally see them. I've seen no. them in uh, the Watson Symington Woodlands around right. the pond. Okay. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, next, we have uh, John Winter, uh, the executive director of New Canaan Land Trust. Um, just uh, update on the partnership with Bristow Bird Sanctuary with the town of New Canaan. The Conservation Commission, and you can just um, any questions, and we've got Tiger here um, to just go over the uh, sanctuary stewardship agreement. I know I have some questions as well um, for Tiger for you to answer, but John, do you want to go ahead with some of your questions or just give us an update? I can give you an update and then happy to hear uh, your questions and answer them. We've at in a previous meeting with Chris and uh, Sarah and, and a few other people from the Friends of Bristol, we kind of commenced our kind of role in this. And what that has been so far is to do a, a twice weekly walkthrough by our land steward, Brian Cucciara, to identify things that we find. So for example, uh, the first issue was a tree came down on the, on the trail, Brian notified you folks who notified the town and the, and the tree was removed. We're also filling up the bird feeders um, and uh, uh, making sure that kind of we're reporting generally on kind of what we're finding. Okay. That whole thing, you know, leads to really for us just a few process questions that would be great to kind of go through with you, which may be answered, uh, Robin, by the questions that, that you ask me. Okay. Um, so I can just kind of tell you mine, yeah. you know, really they're more about kind of how it works when, so really simply to that incident, when Brian is out walking the trail and he finds something, something minor, you know, there's a limb fell and it's something on the trail or something like that. Do you need to be, let know when that happens or should he just do it? A limb falls, he can go take care of it. just take care of it, right? The tree, you know, Exactly. let us know, okay. you know, the dead tree. Sorry, I'll turn that thing on. The, uh, you find a dead tree let us know because they get the tree warden to come in and get our tree crew. But if a, if a limb falls across the trail and he, because I've done the same thing, limb falls across it. the trail, I just pick it up. I, I go, I put it in the, put it across the trail, you know, okay. get it off the trail, if you will. You know, so I, you don't have to call us for that. But if there's something of a nature that he can't handle within a minute, you know, with minimal effort, then just let us know, if you right. will, you know, you know, all right. It doesn't matter. Just, you know, he can just email me or text me or whatever and just send me a picture. Picture's best, you know, because then we can, the picture I can just, like Chris used to do it all the time, just send a picture. I could send a picture off right. and, and then have it done. 
You know what I mean? Okay. At least everybody understands what it is. They're not searching for it, mm -hmm. if you will. Right. So yeah. does the Conservation Commission need to know that as well? Do I just copy you? Does Brian just send this to Tiger and copy the commission so that everyone's on the same page I think about that's what the we way find to, there? I think that's the way to go. I mean, because okay. it's the, I reading it over the advisory rule was that the land trusts would go through and see things and then, but, but Brian can't go in on his own with like a chainsaw. Not necessarily. Yeah. No, no, that, cause then that starts to get into, so got issues elsewhere. So I start getting into volunteers working in the park. That's one of ours. Right? So let's, let's so talk I got, about that. I got yeah. a problem with <clears throat> power tools can't, so no power tools whatsoever. <laughs> and then it starts to get into, I have a union, right? So it starts to take union work away, if you will. Possibly, you know, not, not definite, but possible, which then leads me to a possible grievance for the fact that, you know, my men should be doing the work or if, if there's that much more work, you should be hiring another, you know, another labor groundskeeper, what have you. So that gets a little touchy. You want you know, when you go and do the clean your mile, you come in and do a, like a whole thing with like we did with the exchange club where we're planting. That's a different Mm -hmm. entity versus coming in and doing maintenance if you will um in the park or you yeah. know in bristol so that would get a little touchy so i'd rather have it be you know the president just let us know what you know what needs to be done we'll do it and then if it comes down to that you want to do like a wholesale cleanup that's a that's like a volunteer effort if mm -hmm. you will like a volunteer day that's different than uh than a routine maintenance item you know so the steward so, yeah. so that leads us though into the, the stewardship program. Right, so that perfect segue. So we have summer interns who join us. We start in a few weeks with this, with our two of our um, high school, McKinney High School spring interns. And that uh, expands into about 15 young people until the end of August. Okay. Now that Bristow has kind of been added to the stewardship you know, kind of, you know, portfolio, if you want to call it that, we do have access to them to do work in Bristow, okay? To Tiger's point, mm -hmm. they would be available, but if it's, you know, certainly, you know, problematic for you folks, we can kind of direct them out elsewhere. But I did want to say that they're available to do stuff that you folks might, might not be able to right. do. So here's yeah. an example, okay? So um, one of the issues that we have on our, nature preserves generally is invasive species, okay? Mm -hmm. And some of them from our kind of first walk through um, recently, kind of what we've identified at Bristow are garlic mustard, burning brush, and Japanese barberry. There are others, mm -hmm. okay? But those are kind of the predominant ones, okay? Removal of them is, you know, something that interns can do, okay? Right. Easily, you know, and bag the stuff and take it away and what have you, okay? But then there's what happens next. Okay, which would seem to be a, 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 an item to kind of bring up with the conservation. If we're going to, now we have these spots where we remove things. If you don't replace them with other plantings, okay, you, these invasive backs or other ones, okay. Mm -hmm. The decision around what goes there, who puts them in, and who pays for them, okay, is one of the bigger issues. And this is just going to be ongoing because invasive species management is kind of, you know, never ending. So a question for us is how does that process work and it may be nothing for now okay but when that if, if invasive management on bristol was something we want to do we would we would raise that that was something we could start this summer or some other time so that's really about kind of guidance for kind of a, a longer term approach of what happens mm -hmm. there. so i mean depending on what because i'm thinking of like beautification league point of view mm -hmm. like we're in mead park we're doing work right. all the time what can the stewards do? I think that, I mean, that invasive management is be fine, you it's know, fine. in that okay. regard. Yeah, because that's going to help us and we're not going to get to it. It's something that we're, you know, literally not going to get to. And I don't know if I would be able to hire, you know, to go do that, if you will. So, you know, to that point, you know, for what the what the league does for us as yeah. well, you know, it's phenomenal. So I don't really, you know, I look at it. One point in time, we had the Waveney stewards. They were building walls. I mean, you know, they went out and built a couple of walls. They did a couple of other things. When you have the interns, I think that the bets are off at that point in time, if you will. Yeah. You know, you know, you you want to use them in Bristol? Use them in Bristol. Have at it. Right. You know, let's right. let's go. You know, let's go with that. You know. Super. Super. What about what about the? Um, we talked about this, I believe, at our last meeting. The you have engaged the slops from the high school to do some. Um, management or, or, or repairs of 
um, damages that have been done. And perhaps the interns could also participate in that since the- That's actually an excellent question because they work with us as well. And so maybe not to get too much into the weeds here, but I guess I will ask if there were to be a slobs program at Bristow, would they work with us or would they work with the commission or the town? How is it done now? I heard done it. now, we don't really have one. So, I mean, if you were to put one together, I think we could talk about how it was, how it would be managed, okay. you know, and, and where. Um, I'd have to talk to John and Todd about that and see what their feelings were, you know, but if, again, you know, that's the service league of boys, right? That's a, you know, yeah. so that's kind of a, you know, that's a, that's what they're supposed to do, if you right. will. Right. So, you know, given that regard, I don't think that that's, you know, I don't, uh, a grievable offense, if you will, you know, you get a grievance from the union right. and be like, listen, the service league of boys, this is their mandate, right? right. They come out here and they do certain things. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily see that as well as smart, you know, they were going out there every week, doing it every week, every week, every week, then maybe something, somebody would say, oh, well, that's weekly maintenance that you're having somebody else to maybe that's, that's a tougher call, but I'd, I'd rather cross that bridge when I come to it. You know, if you can get some of this, some of the slobs to come in, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. And for yeah, paying nice of thing. plants that could come out of if we deem our our line item budget. Oh, if, if uh, buying plants for them yeah. to plant things like that, yeah, you have a you have a twelve thousand dollar budget. Yep. Um, speaking, of, let me find out. We did the graffiti. Yeah. The graffiti came out of it. Right, yeah. but this is the budget going up to June thirtieth. Correct. The, so the budgets, yeah, the budget's starting to trend down. Right. Um. Uh, Chris gave me a couple of ideas on things to uh to do you know with that money um and i think we've got somewhere on the hour of like seven or six left overall okay. things like i had to do i had to do two fence i had to do a fence installation and then a fence repair okay. so i had to do fence installation with the um putting the uh cables on the top to try to you know get make it a little bit higher for the deer and then i had unfortunately i had a tree fall and take out an entire corner by the um the daycare. Okay. So I had to spend about two thousand dollars there. So all, all in there was about four, five, six grand. It was two and four, so six grand on, on fencing, fencing alone, Le leaving six. Right, twelve hundred for the um, graffiti leaves me with about five. Okay. You know, and that's and then we can come up with how you want to. You know, so things finish. like the the plastic that needs to be removed along the stream is that, is that comes plastic out of the budget? or was that the was uh, that the, was that the fence. Set fence? Yeah, that, that's actually part of the project. So oh, that okay. comes so out that... when the project is done. That's free. Okay, Peter so... Line's got to take that out when it's all done. Yeah. Okay, that, so... that's that's part of him. That that's zero cost. Okay, so we have till June thirtieth. <laughs> okay. No, no, yeah, not for that. That yeah. one will stay. That one. No, will no, stay no. For our for the five thousand dollars. June thirty. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I think there was a couple of ideas. John would like to buy some additional stone um, for the trails. Okay. So we have, we have stuff on, on because it's a special mix, right? Yeah. So buy some additional stones. So we have some stone on hand so we can do some uh, trail repair. And then um, I forgot the others that were, uh, that were on the list. I think some of it was fencing. Bring load the fences, maybe get Gannon to see. If yeah, that was a good idea. So the fencing or, you know, um, you know, if you don't grow up on a farm, you don't realize you need to close the fence sure. when you yeah. open it, right? It's rule one, right? So people are leaving them open so if we can get them spring loaded, then they'll close. We don't, deer aren't. Yeah, like they, they have a big garden. The, the yeah, they automatic. So the thought was to ask in and for a quote to spring load them to get them to close. I think then, that'd be, uh, that'd that be would be, be yeah. Right. right. I think was, that's. The, yeah. And then there was a thought to paint the, the sign itself to gild the sign where it says Bristow actually gild it so gild the bristol portion so it's not all black so you'd see that so it would stand out you know to paint that if you'd like to do that that's another you know another so i don't know what the commission but i think the the spring loaded yeah door. so the first to me are the yeah most i want to see how much that is and then you yeah. see if you're if you're going to exhaust the if you're going to exhaust the budget or not but then there's there are other things that can be done there could be some further fencing enhancements stuff stuff like that but I, okay. you know the goal would be to to, to utilize the budget, you know, to the, to the enhancement of, of risk. Right. You know, if we have, my fear is if we don't do that, Good then they'll, they'll say, you're not spending it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so that, yeah. that's my, my fear is that, you know, if you're, if you get, you know, and the town fathers would be right in that. You know, right. You, you, you said there was a need. You didn't utilize the need. We're, you know, we won't give you the money. Yeah. $12,000 isn't going to go that far. Um, 
if you could get an estimate or, or if you can find out from Gannon, if they could do that. Yeah, I can do that. Um, and then, I mean, that sounds like that's going to be probably. It quite possibly could exhaust, exhaust it all. Yeah. But if it, if it doesn't, then it'll look to buy a little bit of stone. And then, um, and then if there's some other things, you know, I like the gilding idea. I thought it was a nice idea, you know, but we can we only see what else comes up. Okay. What is the survival rate of the camp entrance planted? So far, they've been so good. We need to um, uh, order the the mulch. Yep. Um, did the plaque go up? I didn't see it last week. When no, the plaque's okay. still in, in my office. office. Yeah. Um, it's not so much. We've had some stolen. Well, I would call that they didn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> they might be surviving somewhere else. Yeah, they're, they're doing well um, in some of the yard. <laughs> so that leads actually just to, John, you're here, a quick question about the gate at Bristow um, by Old Stanford Road. Is there a way to lock that where the land trust? Mm -hmm. We can lock to lock, is what I said. But where land trust has access to that lock if they need to go in with it. No, so it's their lock. So we have a lock on it, right. right? So all we do is we open up the lock, lock their lock to our lock, and their lock locks to the to the other and chain, right? And, and they yeah. can open and close their lock. Yeah. Our lock stays shut, right? Yeah. And then they lock it back to us. We open up ours. They they stay shut. We lock it back again. So that way we don't have to, you know, because two lock, lock system. Yeah. It's a two lock system. Yeah. And but they're, you know, since they're sister together, you don't have to worry about. It. You just open this one, it opens. Yep. You close this one, you open this one, it opens. So how that's do we it. get that going? Because I just see people. Just buys a lock. He buys a lock and we'll okay. put it on it. Yeah. Okay. That's it. The key exists. The key exists. It's the problem that we have keys. That's 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 a it's a yeah, that's There's a master key. master. Yeah. yeah. So we'd rather but not have someone it. came with brush last what two years ago and dumped it in the bird sanctuary. Not was it? Anymore. No, I thought there was someone came in like two or three years ago and dumped. I don't the brush. remember that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't remember that. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah, but we can. Yeah. 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 Your point was if someone was stealing plants, they had to have. Probably. I mean, I, I have to know. I bring my truck in there mm -hmm. when I was planning yep. it. I had to. No one questioned me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. So no, it's fine. But if they if if they have, I, I would imagine you have locks on your other gates, right? And it's probably is nothing. You got nothing. No. no. Oh, okay. It's easy to get a lock. Okay. Yeah, I thought you might have like on other ones, you know, like some chains or whatever. But if you don't, just get a lock, you know, or a combination. You can get a combination lock easier. You just tell people the combination on your side. Whatever you want to do, yeah. and we'll just lock it in, and then we're done. Yeah. We do that elsewhere. You know, we have that elsewhere. So I think it's probably the easiest. From I, I, my personal opinion, I think it's the easiest. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, and then my other question regarding, um, and Chris is here, the the, um, the uh, stewardship agreement is the land trust can do programs. Yeah, that was my next, that was my oh, next okay, point. Sorry. Thank Go you. ahead. So um, the bigger part, and really why we were asked to be involved in this was around programming. You know, mm -hmm. especially around bird watching in the uh, you know at Bristow, and so as we as that kind of unfolds for us and we design um, the events, is there some sort of approval or per? I mean, if we schedule an event, do, is there someone we need to talk to? Well, we have a special events committee, right? So you're making an event at a town park, right? Town exactly. land, if you will. Um, I'd have to ask talk around that because you know either either you let the recreation department know that it's occurring so that we know that it's occurring right i don't think it has to go it doesn't rise to the level of a special event a special yeah. event is like so exactly. 100 people 50 people yeah it, it, yeah with multiple departments involved but i think if you just you know it's sort of a recreation event if you will right That's so if you let you know to me 20 you'll, 30 you'll people let the recreation department you know, know yeah, that you're there you know kind of we have an event in the park so then Everybody's kind of informed. I think that that might is be- Is it recreation though? Are they still overseeing Bristow? Because it's- Well, the recreation was never overseeing Bristow. Right, so, sorry, it's the park. So, right. but it would still go through the recreation. Well, John's the director of Parks and Recreation. That's the only reason why I'm saying recreation. I mean, mm -hmm. you can send it to me and I'll send it to them. I don't have a problem with it. All right. You know, because the parks technically fall underneath my purview, right, in the charter. So okay. the, uh, underneath the charter, underneath public works, is my, is the is that but you know i don't i don't want to make it too technical so it's more like just letting us know what's happening if you will and i i think what you need to what, what you're going to see is um the reason why the programming is important is because bristol park was always meant to be a educational experience we wanted to have youth in there we wanted to have adults in there to learn more about birding and bird habitat 
um, the, the land trust saying, hey, we're going to do two bird walks, you know, they're going on right now. It doesn't go through special events. It's sort of right. like uh, Frank Ellis. And these things don't rise to, you know, 100 people. They're like 10 or 15. Yeah. But another event could be, we're going to go in and identify flora. We're going to take a look at the plant diversity of the park. And that's a walkthrough. And that's generally a 10 or 15 person. I think you have to meet the rise to the um, kind of figure out, does it rise to the level of a special event? Or does every event need to be? And I think, you know, if you're looking at something at 50 people, that's a special event. Below that is just, it's it's a walk in the park, a guided walk in the park. Right. So, but if you, so, so they, okay, so you don't need insurance for that or anything like that. It would fall into the recreation. No, I don't think so. You know, okay. I mean, the land trust has got, they have their own insurance and the town's insured and people right. are walking through right. the park. Right. That's We're not true. asking anybody to do it. It's a bird walk. It's, yeah. 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 What's it, right. Pretty much what bird it is. Bird walk, nature walk. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Something like that. Hard and, to, you know. And adapt. again, mm -hmm. in the future, there'll also be access to the public school system to go in and bring a, a, a group of school children for a walk right. in the park and look, look in, you know, get nets in the pond, look for birds or what have you. So, uh, you know, that's TVD. That's unlikely to be hosted by you, but it might be you have a steward walk along with the class. Okay. Any more questions on the stewardship agreement? Um, yeah, there's a piece in here about, um, actually, Chris, you and I had spoken, actually, it was months ago now, about new signage uh, for the centennial uh, in anticipation of that. And in the agreement that says that uh, subject to town approval as the size, design, and location, who is that? Who, who approves signs? What section is that? Uh, it's page two, third paragraph, about halfway down. Okay. Oh, wow. Land trust meeting. Subjects of town approval but as to sign design location. I, I think that was related to the fact that at both entrances, there's going to be this map. Um, and th this is being designed by Keith Simpson Associates already, right? Right. Yeah. They have a, yeah, two additional signage there. Is yeah, exactly so there's that. going to be, that's the These are the kiosks. We're talking about. It's sort of like a kiosk, but right. a, a platform. Yeah. Um, and then, um, uh, but it, it, I think where the signage issue comes through is it has to kind of be Conservation Commission approved. Right. Well, you, Tiger, you, you can explain this. Conservation Commission has responsibility for Bristol Park. DPW manages that. Right. like Just like the Parks and Rec Commission has to approve certain things. It goes, it, it's the two as each. So it's Conservation Commission. Yeah, it's like would, when they would, change would the signs to... at Kiwanis and Parks and Rec right. Commission. Mm -hmm. groups. So, yeah. And so the only difference was that when uh, Bristol Park was done, there was a decision to actually come up with a slightly different look of signage to say, hey, this is a different thing. Right. As opposed to the standard brown, it went for a little more color. Okay. Again, that's that's really up to the Conservation Commission, how they how they see that. Yeah, so just bring it to us. And then... uh, but so we'll just talk to you about that. But okay. to give you an example of another sign, um, there used to be a sign in, in the park for you know donations for bird food. And that sort of has disappeared. But the land trust literally, literally I, took, <laughs> I took I took the I pulled it out after it's been rated six I, times. I think it's but the land trust may be able to put a little QR code, code. sign next to the bird uh, feed container to say, you know, donations for bird food. And then they can collect that and use it to buy bird food. And is that okay to do on town property? It's already done. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think, think it's, right. I don't see it being a problem. No, and so. I think Waveney Park Conservancy also has a QR code. They might code. have a QR code already, yeah. Right, for them. so you have a QR code that says if you, you know, because people wander and they say they want to do something, they read the QR code and say, here's 10 bucks. All right. That's safer than putting it in a box and having it stolen. Stolen. Yep. And one and one last thing. Um, when we promote various events that we're going to be doing there, we want to make sure that uh, you know it's it's shown as a collaboration between the interest and the town. Um, is there some sort of you know kind of uh, appropriate you know stock language that that the town uses for such things? And we can talk about that off you know offline. But we want to say you know you folks are doing all the work, you know, all the work in there. You want to give, you know, deep W credit and, mm -hmm. you know, and the town for, you know, the, you know, the good works that we're doing together. So. We don't, we don't have stock language per se. We do have a communications committee that meets every Monday at 11 okay. to kind of go over what goes on the website, what goes on social posts, if you will, social so those, media that posts. Might be the right that would be a social media post. So at that point in time, you know. Uh, Who is we'll, that? 
it's a committee. We meet at 11 o'clock on a Monday. The, uh, I would go through either Tucker or Mimi, um, okay. uh, Mimi Pitt, they kind of, and Pam, they kind of run the three and kind of figure on how we, uh, um, and then we sit in the room, we say, okay, that's a social post. This will be on the website. This is something else. Um, that kind of thing. So you can, uh, yeah. Send it I mean, the way I see it happening is that we have an e-newsletter that goes out to, you know, mm -hmm. hundreds of people, which right. actually more than you know, about 1300. Um, and we would include events that we would have at Bristow in there, you know, and when we describe those events, we would want to say, you know, talk about the collaboration every mm -hmm. time in some sort of, you know, kind of, you know, standard language that happens every time we do it. Right. Yeah. I'm on okay. that. I'm on that. Okay. I get those. So it's, it, yeah. they're, they're really informative. They're actually really good. It's, it's yeah. not like it makes sense to get the approval from that exactly. commission, but also copy the commission. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. So next, uh, so all good, John, with the stewardship agreement. Um, Let's see if there's anything else. No, I think I'm good. And and again, the the, the other aspect of the agreement is that uh, the chair of the conservation commission sits ex officio on the land trust board, so that there's already this tighter linkage. Right. So that that's the other connective tissue. In terms of working through small issues or concerns or back and forth. The language of that was a little vague. It said the town will appoint someone to be on the board. It didn't specifically say who it specifically was. Specifically on the but land trust, trust board right. bylaws, the it, chair of the conservation commission okay, so it's, is ex officio. Right. It, it's not the it's not the town's um, right. Uh, ruling it's land. Yeah, you're talking about that same paragraph. Yeah. Uh, page two. Yeah. Paragraph three. The town will designate an appropriate town official as a representative from the town to serve as a liaison for one. Okay, that's then that's an incremental if decided. But right. why would the town appoint someone and have you there at the same time? That would seem very. Right, right, right. That's okay. two rangers for one riot. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. That's just what we were reading. Like, well, um, okay. So next on the agenda, and John, if you. What mind saying for this? It's the Bristow Centennial Update, sure. uh, which is happening on. Well, the first there's the program with uh, David Sibley, Sibley. Am I saying that right? Sibley, uh, yeah, yes. That's on September seventh, and that's going to be at the library, correct? His presentation. That's a land trust event. That's a land trust event. Okay, so the next day is. No, no, go back. Go back. Start on September sixth. Which is going to be a, uh, 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 a September sixth at three thirty in the park will be a uh, thank you celebration for town uh, park and highway employees and contractors. It's like a pre celebration. When is that? September sixth at three thirty. I think you said parks department doesn't get out until three o'clock. Highway gets out at three thirty. Parks gets out at three. Okay, so yeah. we said three thirty. Three thirty. That's highway. Yeah. Yeah. So we said uh, three thirty. September six will be a um, pre-event. The park will be in. You know, theoretically, Bristol will be looking great, and it's a chance to sell. A chance to thank all the town employees, the park employees, but also all the contractors and service providers who did the work. So it's not a big event. It's you know, maybe 30 or 40 people. I don't know how many, mm -hmm. you know, you'd get some of the parks team, some of Mo's, uh, Mosey's team, and then you'd get a whole range of contractors. So who is, is this Friends of Bristow? This is Friends of Bristow will uh, sponsor this uh, event. And it's basically going to be NA beer, you know, um, and snacks and food. No beer. I don't think we can. Non-alcoholic. Okay. NA beer. That's a lot of I hear you. Okay. Uh, um, uh, and and it'll simply be you know and probably it'll be uh, uh, apple cart putting together a you know a smorgasbord of things, and Do that's you... more to say thanks to everybody, but also for for us to say you know for Tiger to say a few words about the project. Okay, and, and we don't need a special permit for that because that's like the beautification league does. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you. You don't need one. So th so that's that's there. So that has to um, you know Tiger, we got to get that save the date out. To your to the, the yep, players. I'm, I'm going to do that now. Yeah, for Ryan and uh, um, Todd. and Todd and anybody else who works in there, plus anybody mm -hmm. on uh, your staff right. and Mosey staff who've been involved. And I don't know who else, you would know more of who would be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll let I'll let the contractors know too. So that's and, and then I'll yeah, you'll let contractors, but I'll also let the string of contractors out to Greg Falacci and people like that. Absolutely, yeah. So that's the sixth, and the list of the list of vendors is here. So okay. far that I have. 
Um, and uh, you're on the list because you're going to be chair of the, your conservation commission chair. So you'll do the welcome with Tiger. Okay. Tiger does the introductory. You do the welcome. Keith Simpson and Bill Pollack will probably say a few words about the project and, and what they hope to achieve. And then some drinks and food is served. Okay. That's fine. I'll, I'll make sure that they know. Thank you. Got it. Okay. And then it's the September land trust 7th. is the it's the land trust meeting at the New Canaan Library. The program, um, probably if anyone's watching that, that will probably fill up very quickly. I would think so with uh, David Sibley as a uh, thing, and I think the way it'll work is uh, that needs a little bit of coordination. But then there's the um, that there's a the land trust events committee with Michelle Riley. I think bringing that up. Yeah, we're yep. taking that on, but that'll be, um, you know, reserving seats for land trust members and then general general sign up. I mean, it's a great attention grabber. Okay, so now the, the thing is on um, Sunday, September 8th, the Bristow Centennial, yes. the program in um, uh, Bristow itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot, what's that's at two o'clock? It's 2 p.m. September 8th. 2 p.m. So I received a trail walk in the morning though. Uh, there is a uh, early morning birding tour with okay. David Sibley, but right. that's really a land trust okay. event. It may occur in Bristow, but right. it may also occur at uh, Silvermine Fowler. It depends on where the birding experts think it should be. Okay, so I received a special permit from Tucker Murphy. Okay. Uh, but, but the question is now, and Tiger, this you is who is the who runs? Is it easier if land trust is the one who runs this event or is it the town? Because there's insurance involved on the special permit. Mm -hmm. It's probably easier for the town event because they don't have to worry about I would think so too. the land use. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the land use doesn't, you know, takes the, basically, you know, say, hey, you know, tell us what you want to do. And, you know, we oversee it. Probably okay. in, in the end, you know, we're opening the park. Right, so I'd say, well, we'll open the park. You guys help us open the park. You run it, go ahead. You know, okay. it's, a, it's a pass through at that point. So I'm, I'm hiring an event planner. Yeah, in a way. Plan. In, in a, a way. way. I'm hiring an event planner. That's okay. about where I'm at. So. so you're on the special permit committee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when we fill this out. Say it's, yeah, you can put my you say contact town. in for information. Okay. Again, got. it's a conservation commission Mission. sponsored event, you know, with DPW. Right. And it's being help, organizational help from the land trust and friends of Bristow. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Um, Richmond lot, we're looking to, we'll ask the police if they could um, put some cones up there. Uh, I know that someone from the land trust, I think it was um, Kristen Cottrell, she was going to ask about the baseball to see if they're having games that day, but I don't think they know the schedule yet. I suspect there'll be a baseball game September 8th. I mean, we're heading into October, likely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and then Tiger would, and would we, it's a town event, would we need police there? Well, in it, probably not. I mean, no, but it, about, any traffic? I don't think so. No, no I mean, okay. you're asking people going to park in the park and walk in well, at that point, right? Right. But I mean, our, our sense is the park is going to be pretty crowded. There's just yeah. not a lot there. So that was the idea of being able to use Richmond Hill and have people park there and then walk either on the new... That's still a, you know, I mean, I, it, are you going to have a certain, are you going to have like a certain volunteer or somebody from the land trust there saying this is to be used for the the event and then the people can walk in, park there and walk into the park at that point? I don't think you need a cop. At I that don't think point. you need a cop for that. Yeah. No. So we can reach out to search for You can reach out to search and see okay. if they'll help you with just parking. Yeah. And, the, and literally there's a crosswalk there to get across the sidewalk that leads you down to the park to walk right. you into the park. I mean, right. at that point in time, you know, you're in the park. I think right. we're okay. Okay. You know, at that point. Perfect. Thank you. Need that is I would ask the question: Do you even need to involve one more party to cross the street into the park from the? I don't think we need. No. no. The the, um, the the issue we'll also have is there's only by that point there'll be the four car pull off with a handicap you know with a with a you know right a, a sign, and there will be some people like um, I can never remember his name. Do, the doctor in town, what's his name? He shows up at everywhere. He's Sherm Bull. Sherm Bull. Right. Oh, Sherm yeah. Bull has a lot, it would be a long walk for Sherm, although he'd probably try I to. I saw him walking he's, he's on climbed Park Everest. Street yesterday. Yeah. He's, he's out there all the time. He's climbed Everest. He, he climbed Everest, I know, but he's now walking. Yeah. But there yeah. are other people who don't walk as well. 
Right. So we're going to want to make sure that there's also someone there saying, if you want to drop off, yeah, that's turn right. out, turn around, and then go put it in the parking lot, that should be possible. So that's another okay, thing. Okay, so, so on Old Stanford Road, have someone there for so the pull-off. Yeah, you'll want somebody at that at that pull-off. Right. Otherwise, it'll just be, it'll, it'll be, it'll have four cars. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you want to make sure that people can pull up. Because there are some people fair, I know fair. who want to attend who aren't really great on their pegs. You know, so you want to be able to wander. Can we there. use the, the, by that, what is it, the water pumping station, that turnaround? That's how people do turn around. Yeah. Uh, you can we can go down we can go down to the bottom in there and park i have a little bit of an issue with the condo people don't want anyone kind of going past that so we put up a couple of barricades if you stay on the pavement you're talking or you're no, talking about by, on, on, by, by, uh, the, the problem you can turn skip it key by you'll yeah, yeah, you the spot. Well, that's that, the okay yeah i thought i was on the no because i pump station in meat park too I, I no 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 sorry there. the one on old on uh, 106 okay. um because then people can just turn around in it not sure. to park in it okay uh, but we could have maybe a land trust volunteer or conservation commission yeah. member just there helping Probably, people. Yeah. We talked about, I think um, the, the events committee talked about getting some slops come out in Richmond Hill, direct people or hand out brochures okay. thing at the entrance, also helping for setup and takedown. Okay. Um, okay. So that, so Tiger, I will send in that permit now that I know okay. it's going to be through the town. Um, is there anything else regarding that uh, centennial that we need to, from the town's perspective, we need to do? No, I just need to let everybody know. I, th I think we let everybody know, but there are some things okay. on the list here. Um, for sure, uh, Todd and, and Ryan want to be briefed on this, right? Or the Parks Department team wants wants to know okay. about what's happening. Yep. I believe that there's going to be a request to Todd or Ryan for 75 chairs so that they can be okay. brought in. Um, yeah, just give me a list and I'll get it. Give you that's, so that, that's going to be included in the permit. Right. I, okay. I don't know if that's part of the permit or a separate request. I've done it before where they said, can I get 50 chairs? And they said, sure, we'll drop them off. Right. And then we'll pick them up the next day. And we just stacked them up underneath the pavilion. Yeah, can we get the lock on the... Pardon? <laughs> can we get the lock on the, on the gate before as... the chairs and yes. they're not... People aren't going to pull chairs up. They might throw it in the pond. Oh, I don't think... Um, <laughs> the... Uh... Uh, as far as the event concerned, this is a general request. Um, we we could use a portable sound system. Yes. And basically, it's just a mic with a box. Maybe it's Bluetooth right. connected or whatever. Do you? Does the town have? Some? Parks Department has a Parks. recreation. Yeah. So we'll get that with a podium. That would be go. cool with yeah. a podium. Yeah. Just so we do that for uh, other places, we can figure that out. Well, that's that's really cool. Then Robin, that'll be in under your yeah. your list. So what about um, the, the pavilions there, but what about if you need a tent, if it rains or if there's drizzle? Just ask, we'll bring a tent. Okay, so we what? a couple of easy up tents we can bring. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we do. Thanks, nice to see you again. Good to see you. Susan, Susan. we thought uh, we could use um, uh, three. Okay. Easy up mean the ones you just pull them apart and they pop yep. open. Yeah. Sort of like so. the- Farmer's market. Farmer's farmer market. market size. Absolutely, yeah. That'd be yeah. great. Okay, and how if much it rains, if right? it rains? I mean, so I'll just look at the forecast. That's still, the, the event is rain or shine. Right, yeah. right, right. But you don't need those if it doesn't rain. Pardon? We no, use... I think we, we do because we want to put food underneath one. Okay. You know, there's going to be like a cake and, and drinks and More things than like the that. Pavilion, and pavilion. then another one, we're going to have uh, items that are on the um, kind of like auction site okay. to support Bristol Parks okay. uh, Centennial Fund. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be good. And then if it was raining, you know, so you have them anyway. Yeah. And if it's raining, then they, they do dual purpose. And so can the town provide for some extra garbage? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We normally do that for every kind of event like that. Right. It'll just be picked up on Monday, correct? So that's fantastic, Tiger. Mm -hmm. And then I have the schedule for the 2 p.m. event. I don't know whether we need to discuss that here, but it, it's really Deanna Carlson does the uh, welcome. Is she aware there? of that? Yes. Do you need Brian or any of the interns to like spiffy it up? Like just make sure make things are clean and it all looks it all looks nice, or is that something for the time? I think that's going to be a good idea to have Brian and L there, part of the yeah. part of the events committee for the you know make sure everything's in place. So I mean, like the day or two before, yeah, just, yeah. Know, go well, through you know we're, we're going to have things the, okay. Yeah, nice we're going to have the department the event. Right. We're yeah. going to have the department event two days before on the Friday. And then, so I don't, I assume the park will be in pretty good shape by that point. 
Um, but I'll just have before. Brian make it a priority to yeah. visit there a few times. Exactly. Before. Exactly. Yeah. And right. not related to this, but the cameras are going back up in Bristow. Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay. Yeah, I got a couple on my desk that I got to put up. Okay. Are they the remote awesome. ones that send yeah. signal? Yeah, solar powered. That was a that was a bummer when I went over to IT and said, "Can I have? Can you give me the pictures from the cameras?" And There's he goes, "We could, but we took them down two months ago." Yeah, yeah, we had to move them someplace else. I hear you. Well, I, they're not that expensive, right? There. No, they're not. So we're we're looking at purchasing a couple of others as well. But I have them on my desk to go up. Okay, so I think we're good on this, Tiger. I will send that information to you, and I'll start working with you on mm -hmm. that because um, that was the question of liability insurance and who should go under. So it sounds like it's easy enough. We'll get the tents, we'll get the uh, portable sound system, we'll get the garbage cans. And the chairs. And the chairs. Um, and then Brit and then uh, friends of Bristow, they're paying for all the, they're bringing the food. I think Plant and Canaan will as well. Um, but we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, okay, great. So I think we're good on that. Any questions, Tiger, on this? No. Nope. And that event, will start at two and will be finished by no later than 3.30. Sorry, Anne, do you have a question? Uh, I do, I do. Um, uh, do we have a photographer planned to cover the event? I don't know if the town has a photographer or if the event planner will be involved will be hiring one. That would be great. I so think that should be NCLT. Can you reach out to Lainey Lloyd, possibly? Doesn't she do the board pictures for- yeah, land trust. This year, next week. Great. And then a second question. I went to the. When, when do you want her there? No, just one. Just All ask day? her if she would. She would stop time? by. Yeah. It's just from two to three thirty. Two to three thirty. Okay. And then a second question. Um, I went to the practice event that Chris organized. I think that was when was that last summer, yep. Chris. Um, yeah. And just a thought. I don't know what kind of programming you have planned for this. But it would be so great if there were some young people involved somehow, and it would be great for the coverage and the the photos um, as well. You know, a brownie troupe or um, the high school choir or or something. And I I just thought it would be excellent to to fill the place with not just with the older set. Um, and uh, I don't know, what, what do you have, what are you thinking for the programming? It's a great point. Um, there is an, an effort to provide some entertainment for children, including toys, gifts, and uh, some walking birds, like big bird kind of thing. But uh, in addition to that, the Service League of Boys will be involved in helping organize it. Um, uh, and then finally, the, um, the Madrigals, which is the New Canaan uh, mm -hmm. Acapella Choir, are going to be performing at the uh, uh, Francis uh, uh, unveiling, and they're going to be singing a cappella, Donna Nobis, uh, Donna Nobis Deum. It's, it's, it was, it, oddly enough, it was sung when they last unveiled the Francis statue. They said, but now it's gonna be, the Madrigals are gonna be singing it up on top on the overlook, overseeing where the, uh, uh, where the Francis statue is going to be. So. Um, to your points, yes, yes, and yes, on having um, youth and, and children and family there. And we're expressly planning to have things that would be entertaining for children, particularly because they might be bored by the talks, but they could go over and make little suet feeders or um, bird cutouts and have little toys. So that's in, that's in the planning. Great. Perfect. And any ideas you have for your kid that would work, let us know. <laughs> Well, it's just the perfect time, 2 p.m. Um, yep. Kids are getting out of school at that at that time. And well, no, this is on a Sunday. This is on a Sunday, Annie. Oh, it's that it's Sunday. On Sunday. On Sunday. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I could I could get brownie troops there if you <laughs> if you're interested in that. But um, uh, beyond that, I don't know if the schools would organize something on a Sunday. I would. I would. I think it would be a little harder, but um, I think we have some bases covered uh, and there's going to be a beautiful cake. So everybody loves to have a piece of cake, kids too. It can, it can go into the school's um, newsletters. Um, just mm -hmm. contact someone in the PTCs and um, can go in their newsletter. That can be early in the year. Um, okay, so that's it on the Bristow Centennial. Um, 
the environmental coalition update. Um, I didn't go to that. I know the, um, the, what was mentioned was the plan of conservation development is having a workshop open house on Monday, May 20th from six nine Lapham community center. It's the final draft. That's important. So if anybody wants, um, have your voice heard regarding that. Um, you can go, it's going to be the same format as the first open house. It'll be various, I think it's four or five stations and you'll be able to go up and speak to the PNZ subcommittee and the um, SLR right. consultants who are, are drafting up the POCD. Are you positive about that? May 20th? Yes. May 20th, 6 p.m.? Yeah. Yep. It's not just Sarah, Lapham. Sarah posted it, yes. Yeah. It's up on the Plant New Canaan social media. I think that was the biggest item to come out of the um, That's great. environmental coalition. That's great. Um, pollinator pathway update. Um, the oak tree, hopefully everyone's paid for it. I don't know if, if Jen from Copia has been in touch with you. I'll reach out to her again. Yeah. We're okay. Most of it just waiting, you know. Okay. So you're just in the waiting period. Yeah, when, um, I mean, I, yeah, I can understand she doesn't want to release it, but if we only got a couple hundred dollars left, I would say just release it. Let's get it in the ground, you know, because we're getting to the perfect time to plant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll so, I'll reach out to her. Yeah. Um, I think it was just one person now who hadn't. I, I was following up with people. So worst comes to worst, I'll see if PNC can just cover it. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, but uh, well, it'd be nice while it's. Robin, can mm -hmm. I interject? Yep. Just um, if it's possible, there were a couple of um, uh, nor snags or Norway snag kind trees around it. Um, they, I, I put a little uh, orange tape on it. If Bob could I look told, at them. Yeah, I told Bob about those. I'll, I'll circle back with him. Um, um, because I think that will also give a little more air or a little more light if we took a couple of those small snags out for the, for the I don't okay. know what, I mean, Bob may look in there and say, you know, these two or these three can go, that one should go that we didn't mark or something like that. But if he would uh, look at it, it'd be great. You know, he'll say, what would make the best, uh, what would give this tree the best start? Okay. And then there's um, the New Canaan Pollinator Pathway, including the Conservation Commission and New Canaan Land Trust is having a program on uh, Sunday, May 19th at three o'clock at the library. And it's called Landscaping for Beauty and Resilience. And it's with Pennington Gray. Huh. Um, so that is gonna be Sunday, May 19th at three o'clock. Um, any questions on the pathway? I don't think so. Um, next, recycling, food scrap, and swap shop update. Um, can we start getting those food scrap numbers monthly? What would you like to know? Just how much the weight? Yeah, I can give you the weight. I can also give you, you know, they give us a, an environmental impact report. So um, and it's basically a rolling 12-month impact by the numbers. Mm -hmm. so, but I can give you the report every month as to what they've got. But uh interesting to note the past 12 months ending in april mm -hmm. of this month we we uh disposed of 50,800 pounds which is 25.4 tons which is pretty good which is up wow. from 41,400 or 4.7 tons over last year so the 24 uh, the 12 months rolling to april 23 right. we did 41,400 pounds and then the then the next 12 months we did 50,800 so we're up 4.7 tons Oh, good. Almost five tons of, uh, okay. of waste, um, which the yep. um, thank you, and they uh, they equate that back to uh, thirty thousand, almost thirty one thousand pounds of CO two, which is the equivalent of driving thirty five thousand miles. So they kind of give a little bit on the. So I can say right. the what's called the they, they have an environmental impact report. So every yeah, month that comes in with their there. with their. Um, with their invoicing, I can send you that. You know, and show yeah. you what what uh, you know what that is, and then I keep a. Uh, a rolling data as to how much we we're doing per week. And then I, I graph that out. So I can send that to you also. I okay. So we can figure out what, what we need to tell people and education wise. Well, um, I think this helps because they can understand that a, we're doing better. Right. And B there's definite impact, right? You know, there's an impact here where you got, you know, you know, I'm looking at 25,000 pounds of CO2 last year, you know, was removed, you know, this year we're looking at 30,000, 31,000 pounds of CO2. That's pretty good. Yeah. For, for what we're, you know, what we're trying to do, but yeah. Okay. I wonder and what that comprises, like how, 
disposing of the food scraps in that method saves CO2 versus it going through in general. Uh, yeah, like are they yeah. talking about versus incinerator versus landfill? Our stuff yep. would go to incinerator. The issue is it's wet and heavy in the incinerators. That's my problem is that yeah. I don't think it burns well. I think no, it, it actually, doesn't. yeah, I think it actually detracts from the burn and actually, yeah, uses more fuel to burn it than it actually is giving off. So, because mm -hmm. I was thinking about that the other day yeah. and this morning when I was driving, I'm like, you know, trying to get it out. That wet food waste is probably the worst thing to put. It's like burning wet wood, right? It's the right. worst yeah. thing to put in your grass because things in there can't or something. Get it, right. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's a that's a good thing, you know. Yeah. Um, no, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Right. And that's why the state's probably doing all these incentives to get people to towns. Yeah. Other, I mean, other yeah. than ours, too. Yeah. 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 But you can imagine. Yeah. I, I would imagine that that's exactly it. It's taking yeah. more taking yeah. more energy to burn it than it is actually producing. And we're it's a we're a burn plant, right? So yeah. Burned energy plant, right? So if we're detracting from it, that's not helping us out. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, so, so we recycling, um, we're just gonna have to do more education on recycling. Um, to, I think the single stream is recycling. I took some pictures at the transfer station. I see the black plastic pots are going, it's planning time and they're going in the single stream. So try to get the word out on that. Is that something by the way, with the community, community, the communications committee that we could create something to yes. send to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we could either, we can. You know, yeah, I don't know if we would go as a PSA on the website, that would be determined. No, but, but on the social, the social definitely. Yeah. You know, I would be happy to post that. Okay. Um, you know, and well, the newsletters next, and we'll talk on that. But then, uh, do, they, do those black plastic pots have the recycling usually, sign on them? Because so, no, that's what I tend to go by. So here's the problem that recycling symbol is not universal. Well, it just means a type of plastic. Right, which guides how it get would get treated within a recycling. Yeah, plant. but it doesn't. The chasing arrows don't mean anything. It doesn't mean it's recycled. I mean, in theory, in it theory, could, it, in theory it all could be. Yes, in theory, but styrofoam in theory. So, is it a number guideline? Like, if it's if it's a number of one through three, send it into the stream. If it's a four through six, down or something like that. So that's the problem is that there's not with a single stream recycling. So you really need to go to recyclect.com and look it up. But if you'll say black plastic plant containers or any black plastic, don't. it will tell you don't. But I wonder if that correlates to a, like a number, like we, if we could educate people that way, because that's what I think a lot of people look for. Yeah. Is there that triangle? If there is in, in it goes, but maybe, you know, in it goes only if it's a one through four. It's I don't know what's in there. It's so confusing because okay. you, you can get a plastic yet. cup with a straw and with a top. Yeah, yeah. And the top can have a number two chasing arrows, but that top does, is not accepted in recycling because of the size of the size, shape. Size, even though it's so it, the right material. Yeah. So it's... um Right. It's super confusing. Right. I'm um, sure, well, and my question is, how do we make it less confusing? Like... That is... That is the question. Do you yeah. have? We've been trying that for a while. Yeah. It's very difficult because yeah, yeah it, it's so it's very complex, right? So we yeah. try to push just everybody to the website. When in doubt, go to the website, yeah. and then eventually yeah. you learn, you know, or have the what's in, what's out kind of, you know, what with we, you, you know, your guideline. As the conservation commission, what we could do with Tiger possibly, and this person who is the recycling magician is, I think, from our budget, we could pay for him to come, and if we could do a video that we then. Um, goes on the website other places you know and then informational but it's um yeah okay i was just a, i was hoping there response. was a simple there was a simple answer to that and there's not yeah there's not um okay the swap shop uh is going well i guess it's um got a little crazy this week i do apologize because <laughs> mayfair it's okay <laughs> you know but I, that's fine you know, right. everybody everybody means well right. about where it's at you know that's all. And it, I mean, it, it, you know, and sometimes I spoke to Donnie, it, the volunteers can help us if you get a lot and our guys can't get it and you can bring it up to us and throw it away yourselves. That would be great. Okay. Or just put it to the side. We'll get it when we can. You know, okay. That was his only comment. I said, how did it go? He's like, oh, that was a, yeah, if they could throw it away themselves, sometimes that would help us. Right. It's about the comment I got. I was like, okay. Okay. That was it. Very nonchalant. Yeah. Nonchalant. Unfortunately, we got some big items that got dropped off. So we're, we'll plan to we'll try to do more education on. Yeah. And then at that point, if yeah. you get those, then we could swing the loader down, just load it into the loader. We get it out. Right. If we can't, we can't lug them. Uh, okay. I don't expect anybody to lug them around. 
uh, the scale house is up. There's shelving in there that's been anchored into the walls. Um, we do have a, a ramp for the door. We just mm -hmm. need to put it in. Okay. Um, I don't know if one of your guys could put it in because sure. we had we forgot about it. It's in the scale house, but it, it's it says it's ADA compliant. I'll check. The ramp. See, okay. But yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll talk to Donnie about that. Okay. Um, okay, so that's on that. And then um, we'll just talk about the newsletter and um, Annie. Annie, are you still on there? I am. Okay. So um, the town has a newsletter and, and Tiger, it comes out the first of the month or does it come out right before the beginning of the month? The, the town news on it uh, to the middle of the month. So around, around May 15. Oh, it comes out in the middle of the month. Yeah, well, submittals are supposed to be early and then, yeah, first week of the month, I would say. Submittals are in April, two weeks prior, so it's around the first of the month. Oh, okay, the that's when started. the submittals are, but it comes submittals out in the, middle the beginning of, of the okay. Yeah, right in the beginning. Okay, so for um, the questions we had here is, of course, we can't, and, and you can't submit something to us and we can't discuss it as a conservation commission unless it's during a meeting. Say that again. If Annie were to create uh, something for the newsletter, she can't email it to all of us and we can't have a discussion about it. can't have a discussion, but she can email it to you each. You know, that's, I mean, that's a little bit tough because you're, you know, I don't know if we call that really a meeting. You're trying to formulate something. And then if you discuss it here in total, mm -hmm. well, I don't know if there's a harm because there's a product coming in at the back end of that. Right. It's not a, um, you know, I, I think you might be able to edit that newsletter and then discuss the newsletter here, here, vote on the newsletter here, say this is what we're going to put out. But the, the edited product, I think you can work on offline together. I don't think that, that that would be a problem from a FOIA standpoint. Really? Okay. I'm it's a draft. Drafts okay. are considered non foia -able. So I thought what you could do is send it to everyone. You could definitely send it to and everybody. And then at the meeting, we, we discuss. You could do that too. Yeah. Okay. It could be you send it to everybody, you know. Yeah, you know, and then discuss it. I guess you could you could definitely do that. That's no problem at all, yeah. whatsoever. I was looking at you know if you wanted to take a couple of you know, if you, yeah, a couple. My of concern out. is that there was something that someone didn't like, and then they found out that we were discussing it. I don't even know if it's a discussion per se. You're saying this is my this is my take. That's her take on the newsletter. It's your take on the newsletter. It's her right. take on the newsletter. So it Nobody just can't. Voting. It could go to people individually, but it just can't be like a Google Doc format where we're. No, all you can putting. go. Uh, yeah. Let me ask that question about okay. what, you know, because it's, again, it's a draft and drafts are not foilable because they're a draft. Right. When it's in its entirety and when it's final, yes, it is. Yeah. So I, that's a tough one, of, you know, okay. putting that together. And I don't think you actually have to have a working group to formulate that entire draft sitting here for hours so that somebody can listen to that. I don't I think that's counterproductive, if you will. But I'll ask that question. Yeah. If you could question. Ask that question because I, yeah. Um, okay. So it's, uh, and it sounds like to, it would be so like if, if for our next meeting, if you brought something and sent it to people ahead of time, and then after the meeting, it could be sent to Tucker or Tiger, and then it would go into the following month's newsletter. Right. Yeah. It's the it editorial. Would have to be upon to go in, but yes, that would be, you know, because mm -hmm. we limit the number that go in. For right. So you can't have 20 items. We're trying to keep a sweet spot of how many go in. Okay. So yeah, I would think you would say, I would like to submit something. Mm -hmm. Give Greg Riley a heads up that you want to submit something so he's aware of it. Okay. And then, then, then you tweak it, you send it, and then hopefully it makes it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it's just the, our editorial process uh, in, on the commission. Like, We don't want to take up the whole meeting having debates about a few sentences. Um, we want to be able to have a process where people can, you know, do some fact checking, spend some time with the copy and uh, make changes. And that's not always a, a public process. That's you sitting alone with some copy. And um, sometimes you have to pick up the phone and call someone to check something. So uh, it's, it's a little bit frozen until we can figure out what is acceptable with the FOIA rules. So it sounds like- I think we, that's acceptable. We can talk offline and then bring it to the meeting to vote on. That's correct. Yeah. So we can do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of town council, like someone would send an email and someone would respond back and then Tucker would come in and be like, this is not a meeting. <laughs> right. But it's, it's not, right. That's not the same because you're okay. coming to a document that will be voted upon and sent out. Okay. If you will, you know, so it's more that 
the document can be looked up edits can be sent to Annie, but then it comes when she does the draft comes to the, to the commission meeting for sure. vote. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. Great. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, any other questions, I would push forward to adjourn the meeting or any, is there anything else? Or John? No, I think Annie was oh. Sorry, I just have one quick thing that's not on the agenda and I've never seen part of these discussions, but I've noticed around town there's an increase in the Japanese knotwood, uh, knotweed that's popping up all over town, especially in some of the land trust and parks properties. And, um, you know, I'm scared as coming towards my property and I wonder if there's any talk around town of controlling this invasive that's it's kind of threatening. <laughs> well, the, the garden club did a big project on it at Irwin park. And that's <laughs> when they had, when they had goats at oh. Irwin park, um, to go after the knotweed. And then they had, um, a lot of educational material on the fencing around that. Mm -hmm. So they've been working on it. Um, I don't know as a, as a town, I mean, unfortunately when you disturb an area and then leave it, that's when the knotweed comes in, especially if it's in full sun. Um, do we think this is an issue that we, that is part of our agenda. I'm, yeah, you know, I'd have no idea whether it's something that's relevant uh, for this commission. I think it can be discussed. It, it's it's hard because when was it brought over in the fifties for the? I think knotweed was brought over in the fifties in Connecticut along the highways to shore up. Oh, intentionally. Intentionally. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, um, was it Kadzu or whatever that's eating yeah, yeah, the yeah. south that was brought in for cattle? Um, yeah, I mean, we can definitely discuss that. I mean, I think that an invasive, I mean, we're part of the pollinator pathway. Um, but as for it being on town property, I mean, the town does try to minimize it. Um, and they certainly worked on it with the garden club at, uh, Irwin park because after, um, Irwin was purchased and there was, uh, the soil was disturbed. A lot of knotweed came up. Um, as a, Annie, as an educational point, do you have any thoughts on what the Conservation Commission might do to let citizens know? Well, I think for those of us who are trying to reduce lawn and increase the wild areas of our property uh, where we don't use gas powered leaf blowers and we don't use chemicals and uh, we're trying to plant pollinators and, and natives like uh, meadow or, or that type of thing, it's the knotweed appearing nearby is scary because you just can't control that. And we're already fighting against mugwort and everything else. So um, there are, there's, uh, there are some land trust. I'm right near Irwin and a land trust Greenlink property and it's popping up pretty close by. And I'm just wondering whether the, it's on the town's radar and whether there's any funding or attention brought to it. Um, especially for people who are trying not to do the lawn uh, lawn option. We've done, I mean, the Conservation Commission can certainly do, um, especially it's easier when partnering with other organizations. We've done stuff on beech leaf disease as the commission did something on beech leaf disease. The commission did something on the Japanese barberry, which is invasive in the ticks. So definitely can, you know, propose a program at the library and then information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I'm specifically talking about the, the town parks property and the land trust property because that's where it's really going wild um, right now. But we can shelve this and figure out the best way to bring it. Uh, yeah, so it, was that okay, Tiger, for the next fine. agenda? Yeah, yeah, we can do that, bring about the invasives on the next agenda. Okay, um, I move to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, Annie, do you want to? All in favor? I guess it's three of us. Are we a quorum okay. even? I don't know. Okay. Two, three out of five. Okay. That's good. That's right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Right. Have a good night. Thank or a good day. Thank you, everyone. Take care. All right. So I can just do that through town. Oh, so what's that? Yeah. The special permit.